It's Sunday, April 10th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. And who's muted? <laughs> I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. <laughs> Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Vintage Turbulent Legs, episode number 597. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, yeah. 597. Oh, boy. Let's talk about food. Just eat it. Eat it. All right. So, Gary, what... what <clears throat> what type of food are we talking about today? Oh, baby, it's Sunday. It's obviously gay brunch. What? <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the gig. Here's the gig. Um, the weather has gotten nicer for most mm-hmm. of us here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, people are are definitely breaking the winter cabin fever thing. They're being mm-hmm. uh, they're going out. How do I know this? Because I hear in my neighborhood loud motors, like motorcycles, lots of dogs. I mean, Mm. you name it. Uh, Kids on scooters. Like, and I was like, no, yeah. Even though there's a pandemic. Jesus Christ, Gary. People got to do stuff. Look, it doesn't, just because there's a pandemic doesn't mean you can't go outside. You just. Right. Mass. But notably, everybody wasn't doing that before. <laughs> I mean, now, you know, there's 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 two overlapping things here. There's a pandemic going on and the weather, like Mother mm-hmm. Nature, so to speak. Um. So that being said, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I was thinking about like I just had uh, someone over for dinner uh, on the patio, like for the first time ever that I've lived here all these years. Um. Now that I have a patio table and two chairs um, that were formerly my father's uh, mm-hmm. and they are meant to be a, a patio set. And I was like, it was beautiful out. And I was like, yeah, let's eat alfresca, um, which was mm-hmm. nice. But it got me thinking about like, you know, it's getting to be that time. And the LGBTQIA um, grouping within it, MSM classically gets together and does gay brunch, baby. And like, as the pandemic hopefully is, you know, diminishing and mm-hmm. we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel as people keep talking about it, it's coming to an end, you know, drag brunch, gay brunch, like these things are going to be coming back. So it got mm-hmm. me thinking about a couple of questions. And the first one really is, are there really any gay foods? Mm. Gay, gay with air quotes. And by that, I mean, like. I don't necessarily mean like hot dogs or phallic. <laughs> I was thinking more like bananas. <laughs> like, are there? As <laughs> David holds up his banana peel, um, <laughs> are there foods that we think of as gay, or and or do we like think of them like as specifically for gay? brunch now Mm. this is the let's talk about food series so if you're looking at our video there's a ton of food graphics surrounding us yes of various selections um so like there is one like graphic even though it's just like kind of cartoony all these images there's one in particular i was like oh bitch that that's that looks really nice um (laughs) (laughs) but i didn't include drinks Because what I started thinking more seriously about it, for me, I have a feeling that people think of gay brunch as mimosas and Bloody Marys, like bottomless pitcher kind of Mm -hmm. whatever. And we're in this gluttonous stage of food the past like decade or whatever, where things have to be more extreme. So it's like, you know, you have to get a turkey leg and a bitch. It's not a normal size turkey leg. Like it is gargantuan. Like. You know, you yeah. order your Bloody Mary and it comes with like a two foot skewer and a whole charcuterie board <laughs> stabbed through it <laughs> or a grilled cheese sandwich on it. Or I mean, like, you know, yeah. so, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't, you know, so the foodie in me doesn't really think are considered food as like 
gay, if that makes sense. Like food is food. Food is consumed. Food is eaten, whatever, what have you. If we're not going into, as you said, the whole like the metaphorical, you know, tug in cheek, like double entendre shit, you know, with things like zucchinis and bananas and 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 what have you being shoved up plants. people. Yeah, and eggplants and peaches and whatever. Cucumbers. Like in, yeah, yeah. Like if we're not going into that, then you know, I don't really, I don't really consider anything particularly just like gay. However, um, I will say, um, personally, I did not consider brunch a thing until I heard about it through gay culture, like. Like, mm. I'll just, 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 I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I grew up. So it's going, almost like gay, gay brunch is actually redundant. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Brunch like is just really, gay. Yeah. Like for me, it was always, <laughs> you um, you know, when you, when, you know, I'll just go like, you know, growing up, like we didn't do brunch. It was, you had a breakfast in the morning before you went to church and then you had dinner at like three o'clock in the afternoon because that's what people do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and maybe you did something later in the evening. Um, when I went to college, um, I wasn't awake on Sundays anymore for like breakfast. Like if I had anything at all, it was usually going to get lunch. If then mm-hmm. and sometimes catching it right at the end at the cafeteria before they close. Cause I just woke up. Um, uh, and you know, again, it wasn't until I kind of moved here and, um, embraced the gay life and whatever that brunch was a thing. Um, One and of us. Yeah, exactly. Of us. <laughs> <laughs> and now, um, I mean, we don't do it so much you know, now because of the pandemic, but in general, like that was the thing that Jim and I would do is like on Sundays, we would either get up and Jim would make something and we'd have like a brunch and it would be, you know, traditional like breakfasty fare, sometimes a combination of both. Mm -hmm. Um, Or we'd order something or go out and get something. Um, And we'd always consider it brunch because of what we were doing. And I have friends who even on Saturdays, we would go and get, brunch where he doesn't do a lot of the breakfast foods like eggs and bacon well not eggs mostly um he doesn't like like the breakfasty kind of things because he's a diabetic and also doesn't he's allergic to eggs so Mm. a lot of the breakfast food is kind of out the window for him right so we would go to a place where i could have something more breakfasty brunchy and he would have just like lunch, like a burger or a, a good sandwich. So, yeah, I. Uh, so, so here's yeah. Yeah. here's kind of what I'm thinking about. Well, first I want to get to the to the live chat. Ranger Kings six six nine says, but also not talking about gay food as in BFFs either. Uh, parenthesis that was that video was great by the way. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, bottom friendly foods, and that's fair because actually, like I don't know, I haven't paid attention. Um, if, if gay culture, quote unquote, if the gays go to brunch, if people are still being picky about their food at brunch in the morning, like, um, or if we don't care anymore, cause we just, you know, got our whole thing opened the night before. So now, <laughs> now it, now it doesn't matter. Brunch like, is the, is, is the, is part of the aftercare. <laughs> <laughs> You have been eating like a mouse, like for the past few days to get that bottom like good and ready for the thrusting. And now that you're done, here's your reward. Like you get to gorge on the bacon and the grease and the pancakes and the sausage and and just enjoy all of this like totally non-bottom friendly stuff. Like eat that fried chicken, honey. Have that, have that chicken and waffle shit. Like do it. Like, cause you deserve it. <laughs> Maybe. That's actually really funny, Jeff. <laughs> well, I was just thinking about like if you just did a marathon session, you know, the mm-hmm. night before and you decided to, you know, re- try to reclaim your power bottom status, then just, you know, very well, you might be like, 
I want it all, bitch. Like, you know, and I can have it all because, you know. Depending on what you've been doing, you might also just be fucking hungry. (laughs) Like, (laughs) So one thing we haven't done here, we haven't defined brunch, which is a combination of breakfast and lunch. It Mm -hmm. regularly has some form of alcoholic beverage, such as champagne or cocktail, mimosas, Mm -hmm. Bloody Marys. Uh, served with it is usually served any time before two o'clock in the afternoon. The word is a portmanteau of breakfast and lunch. Brunch uh-huh. originated in England in the late 19th century and became popular in the United States in the 1930s. Ah, uh-huh. <clears throat> in fair. the 30s, not the gay 20s. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, there we go. So later. So yeah. are we saying that the gays claimed brunch? Like reclaiming as, our as... brunch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so cuz when I think of brunch, like I do, I think it's sweet and savory. It is like the foods for breakfast but is also like more entree uh like, you know, items I think from from lunch. Like to me, brunch is damn near anything i mean like Mm -hmm. and that's kind of why these images that you know for the for the layout it's like we've got some breakfast kind of plates we've got some sandwichy things Mm -hmm. um you know we kind of got crossover there's Mm -hmm. dessert i mean it's like to me it's like brunch could be anything yeah um although there is one food that comes up consistently Mm -hmm. but i don't think it's gay but I almost don't know of a brunch that doesn't exist without quiche. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's fair. To me, it is still pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I, I preface with to me. I can't. I, every time. Uh, I need to stop saying quick. Like, I keep trying to type quiche and I keep getting quiz. Quiz? Quick. Quick. <laughs> Damn auto complete. But, but quish is probably what would be an attempt at, at, a, at, a, at a pronunciation. I mean, fair. <laughs> uh, Excuse oh me, gosh. do you have any quish? <laughs> Sorry, I just watched a Chloe 78, the newest video, anyways. And if you don't know who, what that is, anyways, it's funny. It's some funny shit on, on YouTube. Uh, Steak, eggs, just, and bacon. I, perfect brunch. Yeah, like I... With it, with I agree mimosa. in a sense. I love, I fucking love quiche. Like I'll just, I'll own that right now because it's just that nice little blend of everything. Usually, sometimes it's not, but for the most part, like I love egg and meat and cheese, and and I like a a doughy kind of like carby thing to kind of put it, and you put it all together, and then you get a quiche. Like sometimes it's a yes, vegetables. Yes, okay, no. sure, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picking on you, David. You're like, you're eggs, meat, cheese, carbs. And I was like, I mean, yeah, you sure. You can, you can have like, you can have like a spinachy, like a, like a, a, a veggie or two, you know, thrown in there. Um, sure. I, I, okay. Okay. Y'all. All right. So one of my favorite things in the world for breakfast ever is just like breakfast casserole. Okay. Like, yeah, you know, like either biscuits or bread or something and then egg and meat and cheese. Like, I don't need we don't need to get fancy with it. It's you just like dump the... it all in there and then put it in the oven and then cook it and then pull it out and you're good. Like it's that like is my, my biscuits favorite and gravy casserole. Yeah. Like, that's my favorite thing in the, <laughs> like for breakfast because it's it's not necessarily portable. But everything is all together, so you just got to eat it all at once. You can eat it all at once. And, well, and it's all going the same place anyway. So exactly true. But you know, <laughs> well, I like yeah. I, it, that's the thing for me. I, I love casseroles because yeah. one, it everything's going to the same place anyways, and and B, it's you just kind of like put it in a dish and then cut yourself a slice mm-hmm. or or yeah. scoop yourself a, a, a glob, depending mm-hmm. on it. Uh, I really do like uh, egg. For lack of a better word, all these type of breakfast casserole things are kind of quiches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not even sure if that's that. a t- that, this is, Let me clarify something. Definition time again. <laughs> da, 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 da. 
is a French tart consisting of pastry crust filled with savoury custard and pieces of cheese, meat, seafood or vegetables. The best known variant is quiche Lorraine, which can, includes lardons or bacon. Quiche can be served hot or cold. It is popular worldwide. Yeah, you serve me some cold quiche, I'm going to punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like, oh. but one, one of the things I, I, I like about these type of dishes is because the egg is essentially there's a lot of there's usually a, a, a lot of egg to basically all these things are basically uh, 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 fossilized for lack of a better word into uh, uh, a a cook a solid mass of cooked eggs. Mm-hmm. And then you have to uh, excavate to get get to any of that. Fortunately, the yeah. uh, the egg is edible as well, so makes ex- yeah. excavation uh, well. So, yeah. So that being said, knowing what the definition of quiche is, so I just have to say this. This is just my opinion. Uh, crustless quiche, bitches. That's not quiche. Yeah, that's casserole. It's a casserole. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. But like, it's just an egg bake, baby. Like, <laughs> crustless quiche. I'm like, what the fuck is that shit? Like, is that is that There's us like attempting quiche to adjacent for society <laughs> because our education system failed? Because first of all, if you know what quiche is, like, is it that far of a reach that you have to say it's crustless? Like, what? What? Anyways, if it's crust to me, if it's if you're calling it crustless quiche, then it is not quiche. It like, like let's. It is. It is. It is casserole or egg bake or whatever. You, it could is, you it call? Is. Could you call a quiche a casserole? No. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I'm just saying. There's I nothing think, in the definition. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, hold on. I'm going to pull no, casserole no, no. down. Hang on. If you're going to go there, let me ask this mind blowing question: Is lasagna a casserole? Yes. Is shepherd's <sighs> pie? A casserole? No, it's pie. Is a ziti pasta bake a casserole? Yes. <laughs> like, and the, you all don't have to, like, actually... Yes a or casserole no, is a variety <laughs> no. of large, deep pan or bowl used for cooking a variety of dishes in the oven. There's also a category of foods cooked in such a, uh, in such a utensil. To distinguish the two uses, the pan can be called a casserole dish or casserole pan, whereas the food is simply a casserole. The same pan is often used both for cooking and serving. Thank you, Dictionary Dick. Um... <laughs> Go Wikipedia. I know. <laughs> wiki, wiki? Anyway. Um, I... Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to go there. Um, just when, you know, when I think of, like, again, like, when I, when my head goes to, like, when I think of, like, a casserole, I think of, like, those kind of things, yes. Like, there are a lot of things that could be considered casseroles that are not necessarily, like, you would call them casseroles. I, I, like, I changed my mind. Quiche is a pie. Oh. No, a quiche is a tart. <laughs> Which is a type of pie? Wait, wait, wait. So this totally reminds me. If you're not watching Falcon of the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus, <laughs> like one of the best arguments ever. Well, it's part of the big three. What the hell are the big three? What is it? Aliens, androids, and wizards. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and this whole debate. It's like, well, Doctor Strange is a wizard. He's a sorcerer. Ah, a sorcerer is just a wizard without a hat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like. I mean, stupid but funny because now everyone has this context if you think about the marvel universe okay which of the three is it anyways that's how i feel about this moment where you guys are like having a debate about like is like is a is a quiche pie like (laughs) or not and anyways uh, Mm -mm -mm. let's see (laughs) oh lord y'all so like so i mean i don't really know i think the answer for me is are there really any gay foods um, yeah. No, I don't think so. Which is amusing to me, considering the first bear potluck I ever went to, I made pigs in a blanket, um, 
but I made them there. Like I finished and prepped them there because I had to drive a couple hours to get there and mm-hmm. I wanted them to be hot and fresh because I'm a bougie bitch like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, and so anyways, I was like, you know, so I was wrapping the dough around them. So like the, the wiener was sticking out on one end. So in essence, I was aesthetically presenting them as like sort of like as an uncut wiener, which of course everybody <laughs> picked up on. Right. They were like, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I think when I think of it, like in general, no, I don't think brunch is gay. I don't think it's, it's like an actual, like it's a thing, but I, like I said, I think I found gay. I found brunch through gay culture. So uh, there is a intertwining of the two. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there are actual foods per se that are traditionally gay. Um, I actually had typed in, and I lost all my article because I was looking up as a tart of pie. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, but I had typed in uh, gay foods just in like oh Google. Like, so just so you know, like, but I didn't get like anything raunchy. Thank you, Google. Um, but I got like articles, you know, talking about um, representation and, you know, restaurants, how gay restaurants and, and you know, meeting area, just like, it's just like bars were coming prominent and becoming, you know, spaces for, for um, support and, you know, friendliness and, and allowing us to gather. So there's that part of it. It, it. That's kind of when I think about like gay foods and gay culture, I think of like restaurants that serve food, you know, and mm-hmm. bars even that serve food that have become safe spaces are just spaces where we can gather. Um, and that's been, that's where my mind goes when I think of this topic. Um, you know, so gay brunch was... is just really a gathering of gays having brunch. Exactly. Like exactly. Brunch, it's not the brunch that's gay. It's the uh, participants. <laughs> exactly. You well, know, exactly. you know, like drag, when you think of like, like the drag brunches and whatever, like, you know, now thanks to RuPaul drag race and other things like that, like sometimes most of the people that go to these places are, are, are heterosexual women you know, and, and their friends and going and enjoying and watching and, 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 and participating, um, sometimes loudly, um, um, at, at these events, at these spaces. Um, but again, was the brunch gay because it was a drag brunch? Not necessarily. It was just a brunch that had drag queens you know, and bars and, 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 you know, other establishments are catching up on this, you know, this trend and many restaurants now, even, even non-gay owned or Mm non-gay operated, you know, restaurants are picking up on this trend and providing like drag brunches and, you know, bringing drag queens. I remember um, one restaurant in particular in town, I don't believe is gay owned, uh, but it's one of the more higher like higher class restaurants mm-hmm. um, had like drag wrenching was promoting it and it was kind of really awesome. Yes, it was June and it was Pride Month, so it kind of made sense, but it was just this kind of fun way to like be supportive and also take money. So, yeah, right. So, as it turns out, I, I, not in pre- I did not do this in preparation of this show, this episode, but I just looked up real quick. So, Urban Dictionary has something called Big Gay Brunch or Wait, BGB. Wait a minute, let me find it. Oh. Do I have it still? I don't Where know. It? It's in the show notes now. There it is. <laughs> that, that don't need to know about quiches anymore. Uh, oh, and I don't need it to It is search Urban for. Dictionary with Gary. I realized I wasn't <laughs> sharing my sound, so free to hear it. But Right, so David just probably talked over all of it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Maybe anyways. he would have anyways. I don't know. Uh, so BGB for short 
is a phenomenon which occurs generally on Sundays but may happen on a Saturday. It starts with the idea of cooking brunch but balloons out of control with a mini party of anywhere from 5 to 15 people in the kitchen cooking, blasting music, and dancing. The actual food itself becomes a distraction as it's more important to be in the dance cage at this point drinking straight from the champagne bottle that was originally meant for classy mimosas. Most people call off work the next day. (laughs) Wow. The big gay brunch. This definition is eight years old. It's from 2013. This definition is offensive. (laughs) (laughs) Look, it's only offensive because it's the truth. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I so, take offense to well, that, kinda, but it's true, isn't kinda, it? Yes. <laughs> but, uh, Although so, I think that's that's like the like the, the not to say thin, all the tweaky, truth can be as offensive. I'm that, just saying that's like the thin like twinky like like gaze. I'm talking like if this were bear, like you're not distracted bears from food, y'all. Like let's let's get let's, look. There's a let's... difference. There's a difference <laughs> between between uh, twink brunch and bear brunch, which are subsections of a gay brunch. Right. So, I mean, some might say, you know, eating leftover cold pizza um, while, you know, sitting on the couch naked, surrounded by the men that had the orgy last night could be considered gay brunch. Um, You know, I mean, I think the definition has lots of, you know, uh, flexibility. So in addition to the definition, there's actually an article, but this cracks me up because it's nine years old now. It's from 2012. Mm -hmm. And why gay men love to brunch. So it's making me think that maybe gay brunch is antiquated now. Like you know, <laughs> maybe we're off the mark. But um, well, in the article it says, uh, "Yes, brunch is gay. Not the gay of the schoolyard taunts, nor the gay of a rainbow-clad pride parade. But gay men do love to brunch." Uh, so uh, as, and the author says, "As for why I'm stumped, so I gathered some friends together at our favorite restaurant on a Sunday to hold a focus group, and after a spirited discussion." And by spirited, I mean fueled by Bloody Marys. I conclude the following. <laughs> there are five items. Number one, brunch is effortly, effortlessly stylish. Mm. Breakfast is for the everyman. Dinner can be showy, but brunch has a casual elegance to it. It's a oh. challenge. <laughs> you don't need your Barney's best for brunch. It could be certainly, but it certainly deserves more than just shorts, flip flops, and a t shirt. Unless said T-shirt is a Givenchy uh, or Givenchy ribbed tank, though not in blue, Kurokawa because that was so summer of 2011. Bitch! Wow. wow. That okay, devil honey. wears Prada like <laughs> referencing bullshit. <laughs> Number two, at brunch, carbs are not only consumed but encouraged. Many a six-packed gay man will push away the bread basket at dinner so as to not be judged by his fellow gym comrades. Also referred to as Red for Filth in the official gay handbook, volume four. <laughs> but take that same bread, griddle it, and a Madagascar vanilla kumquat gastrique. Top it with something, <laughs> anything, confit, and suddenly it's to hell with skinny jeans and hello, elastic waistband. That's it. <laughs> this bitch had I a mean, lot of fun writing this. Yeah. <laughs> He coming for the queen, ain't he? <laughs> like, but One I mean, I'm gonna, I'm, it, it's kind of true. Like, I have seen we, yeah, you know, we know the guy. We've seen the guy that, like, oh no, I can't eat that. Like, that's that's carbs and or whatever, and that's too much and that's fat. Salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like literally like brunch. Yeah, they'll eat the fuck out of that. But that could be, you know, if you think about it, though, depending on when they have brunch. The, if the one thing that they could have and you eat it all day, you you don't have to worry about it. You know, you can have your carbon take that morning and then you can work, work it off, off the rest of the day. Mm. Mm. I mean, so number three on the list is brunch is the most social of meals at dinner. You make a reservation for perhaps four people at the most, and that's all you bring. But that brunch reservation for 10, that somehow morphed into an unexpected gaggle of 20. Yeah, that's me and my friends. Of course, we'll be happy to wait at the bar for our table. More than happy. Mm-mm. And there's some reality to that. Like I, do I think mean, I that yeah. a late a late morning meal uh, does tend to bring the faglets together. Um, <laughs> I think they faglets. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, I'm just making up words now. So you know. <laughs> 
I think, you know, they do. I think that's, you know, just a thing. Like, you know, they're like, girl, like, I, I think you need to, you need to talk well, shit. You need to trade stories. You mm-hmm. need to like, you know, kiki with your friends. Um, yeah. You know, you have, you have that social aspect of things. And so well, I think, you know, that's how you. Well, you Gary, think about your, your, your traditional, like Sunday claw reservation at the restaurant that you oh. always go to. Yeah. Like how um, it's, it's, you know, I forget how many people we've had at that at the most, but it's all, it's never just like four or five. Um, it's often been a dozen or so depending on you know when and how many are you know are invited (laughs) oh hi fancy meeting you here well not even no that that i don't think that's happened girl that's that's what you say when you're in the back part of the bar and it's dark you know and (laughs) in the background you got that you know music going on anyways (laughs) but no the 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 um the idea being that, um, of course, it is like, you know, for us, this usually like, it's been claw and it's been like after it's been the weekend, the weekend's kind of done. Everyone checks out of the hotel. What well, most people do. And then um, you gather everyone together or someone does and we're all messaging each other. And then it becomes like, how many people? Fifteen. Okay, like we're gonna wait a while. We're gonna be there for a while, mm. and we do. We usually end up waiting, but mostly because the food is good, great, and and it's worth the time because we're socializing. Right. You know, in some cases, there are people we haven't seen all weekend, and we just happen to see them that day. Like you know, you know sure. who you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I also feel like in this moment we should have a moment of silence for Claw. May she rest in peace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeff has no idea what what that shade was about, <laughs> and it's okay. <laughs> Is that a whole other show? Maybe that, that might be a whole that might be a whole other show, or it might be. Well, we can't really do it on the road because you know. Mm. Um, <laughs> but here anyway, we are, here we are, our brothers and sisters and non-binaries in the land that used to be the suburb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we could do that, but uh, that's well. Ooh, uh, mm, um, let's wait on that. We'll put a pin in that. <laughs> we'll put a pin in that. We'll, we'll just we'll just throw out the line. That's another show. Yeah, fair. <sighs> Number Mama. four. Uh, <laughs> Number four. Brunch. Brunch is not for children. You can bring kids to brunch, but they won't like it. First, kids can't wait till 11 o'clock or later to eat their first meal of the day. Second, kids don't like to linger, and brunch is all about taking your time. A good brunch takes an hour and a half minimum. Most kids have trouble sitting still longer than 30 minutes. Oh, and to state the obvious, most gay men are not encumbered by children fact <laughs> like i keyword most yeah so i will i will say yeah. this just be clear. like if it's just me and jim and we're just going to a restaurant or if it's just me and jim and maybe another couple or whatever like and we're just going out like we're usually having like brunch as like a meal mm-hmm. this is not the social hour like brunch this is the we're hungry. Let's have a full meal. Maybe chit chat to each other. Maybe make plans for the day, whatever kind of thing. But like the one, like I keep going back to Gary's one because that's the big one that I always remember. Um, that one, like, yeah, we're there for a while. Like you get there, it takes maybe 30 minutes to an hour because the place is small for like to get the, enough space to sit us all. So mm-hmm. that's time. Number one. Number two, it's a bunch of people ordering at about the same time. So food's going to take a while. So there's that. Three, um, and the most obvious, um, there's no holding back a lot of times in regards to conversations and, and, and what we're discussing and what's being said and done. And considering the weekend that is usually happening prior to that, there's some fun, interesting, engaging stories. Um, 
that are probably not for children's ears. Um, I also will say, um, I just, I, ooh, I don't, I don't know how some families think it's okay to like, like the restaurant you choose, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. That to me, I will be honest, is not a very child friendly restaurant because it's small. You're going to have to wait. You're almost always going to have to wait. There is no immediacy at this place. You're not, you're not getting there even with the reservation and sitting and eating like within like minutes. That's just not the way this place works. And you know that, and you should know that if you've been there before. Having said that, if you have kids, that's a problem. Because you have to keep them entertained while you wait, and then you have to keep them entertained while you eat. And I, I, I ain't having it. Like, <laughs> oh, no, mama, no. In this relationship, there are no children. <laughs> no. Well, they just all get swallowed, basically. Um, you know, so <laughs> it is, I mean, yeah. Um, it's just, it is not, it is sometimes the the at- atmosphere is not conducive to kids. Well, you know. right. And that kind of leads into number five, which cracks me up. It says brunch and cocktails are synonymous. So it goes on, it says, let's not mince words. Gay men like to drink. At brunch, cocktails are poured into slender flutes and come in a kaleidoscope of colors adorned with fruit, parasols, sparklers, or other ridiculous accessories. At dinner, no gay man would be caught dead ordering such a drink. But at brunch, they let down their guard and indulge in their inner divas. And if the drink is named something silly, like a sassy slingback, why, yes, we'd like another round, please. Or if my <laughs> partner who whose gaiety is exceeded only by his sage wisdom put it two words. Bottomless, bottomless mimosas. mimosas. Mm-hmm. Although it's funny, so I'm not much of a drinker, granted all the wine behind me. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> she says she says that she has a full wine cave like available to her <laughs> yeah, at any given time. Um, but um, I will probably occasionally do the mimosa. I don't think I would ever do a bottomless one. Cause uh, so I mean, here's, it's just here's spiked orange I've, juice essentially. Well, correct. Yeah. And what I've, what I figured out in my experience um, of uh, a few brunches is when a bottomless cocktail is made available, girl, do a little thinking like, how much is the bottomless versus how much you think you're going to drink? And mm-hmm. usually I found statistically, if you think you're going to drink three or more of said thing, then the price is probably a deal. Mm-hmm. But if there's a pitcher option, that's usually more preferable if you're with a, a cluster of folks and are they willing to share? So like, you know, pitchers of whatever the thing is, whether mm-hmm. it be Long Islands or mimosas or Bloody Marys or something else, margaritas, you know, and then you can kind of spread, spread the, you know, the spread it around speak. Right. Um, you know, that might be a, a, a better thing, but I agree with you, Damon. Like I'm not a big drinker. So like, mm. and I do think a lot of these things that are being pointed out in this article. Well, hello. Um, <laughs> Speaking of motorcycles. That. Yeah. Yeah. We heard. Um, so yeah, I think that, uh, like a lot of this is kind of referencing younger, like Mm -hmm. culture, um, because as you get older, I think you, you know, don't need to, um, yeah, as much, so to speak, not that brunch is a party, but it is kind of, yeah, I will say though, (laughs) it may not necessarily be a cocktail, but like a really fun, like coffee drink. Mm. Like a fun like like beverage or like or like a, a a a beverage that I would normally not have. Like in general, you know, mm. yeah, I have a shit ton of wine and and I could make like a basic coffee kind of thing, but like if you have a a fun like syrup coffee, you know, beverage combination that like I couldn't get anywhere else or maybe could get somewhere else, but like get like a, you know, industrial, like mass produced version of, 
I'm probably going to be more drawn to that. Like mm-hmm. a caramel mocha macchiato or, or yeah, or some, you know, something mar- like something like a like a um, oh gosh, um, uh, I can't remember what it was called. Oh well, anyway, it's fine. Um, I'm sorry. There was one that. that I had. There was one that I had with um, AJ in DC area. It was a co- it was coffee, but it was local coffee, and it was a local syrup that they made. They homemade, and it was. Um, it included um, like fennel and hmm. something kind of, not fennel, not fennel, not fennel, whatever licorice is. Yeah, but it, fennel. fennel has it. Um, yeah. There's, uh, I mean, there's licorice root itself, but I don't think that's yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah. most people think of fennel seed or like a fennel powder. Um, yeah, yeah uh, it was star anise. Was it? Um, it, was some, it was something just like off the wall. Right. That I've I would have never gotten like normally, and I was just like I have to try this. You know how you see something like on a menu and just like that sounds really good. I should have this. That's what's going to draw me more than like the fabulous like bottomless mimosa thing or this like funny tongue and cheek named co- co- cocktail. Like you're going to get me on a fun little like tasty coffee drink that doesn't that's not readily available anywhere else but here. This is yeah. why I've been known to, uh, uh, when I find a new pl- new place, like a food truck or something like that, I'll, mm-hmm. uh, in, that I would easily frequent, I would end up like exploring their menu by being like, one time I'm going to have this and this, and then I'm going to have mm-hmm. the next item on the menu, <laughs> and then the yeah. next item on the menu. And just kind of like, if I don't like it, it's my own damn fault for ordering it. But sometimes I don't know if I... Li- I like it or not until I try it. Exactly. Yeah. So when you see something new, it's like, hey, I haven't had that. Um, so I'm yeah. going to try that. So I mm-hmm. I have uh, at times uh, tried one of everything, essentially. Not all at the same time. <laughs> multiple visits. Over time, you've had one of everything on a menu, just over time. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not always that way, but I will say that I do appreciate, I appreciate a, a menu that, it's creative and comes up with things that are, are can draw you in. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, um, er, er, okay, I'll just be blunt and honest. I can get chicken waffles anywhere. You can get fucking chicken waffles at IHOP. Like, let's just, let's just like oh. be like, oh, like, come on. Dave, but, David, keeping it real now. <laughs> <laughs> like it became, it was a thing. It was a fad, and and well, everyone grabbed onto it. Right, and it's it's had a whole story arc, basically. Yeah, like, yeah. there was a time where you had to seek places mm-hmm. that had chicken and waffles, so it exactly. made it like a destination kind of food thing. Like you could only exactly. get it in certain locations or whatever. And I agree with you. And then it became like all the rage and it's like, now everybody's got chicken and waffles and you could get, you know, like heirloom wild range chicken and waffles. You could get, you know, uh, Nashville hot chicken and waffles. Yeah. 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 You know, and I'm just like, okay. Okay. Um, in order to wow me with a chicken and waffle, you got to do something else with it. Um, and there's a place in Vegas, hash hash go go, that has done something mm. super fucking amazing with it. That yeah, like I will if I, I mean that that's a plate and a half. Like no, that's two fucking plates, really. It's re- really. it's ridiculous. Uh, when we did the gay Orlando week, mm-hmm. that Pride week, many 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 years ago, um, mm-hmm. we went to a hash house a go go in Orlando down there. I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. where we went, and the food is just ridiculous. Like you know. Yeah. Um, and it was, we kind of knew ahead of time, like, there were certain things like, bitch, you order that, like, you better plan on, like, splitting it with other people. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, we went there before we went to a park, so we couldn't take any of the leftovers. Yeah. And our our personal takeaway as a group of, like, what was there, six of us? We were like, um, yeah, it was a fun experience. It was a bit pricey. It Like, it was all good, but we were disappointed that we hadn't really planned appropriately yeah. because like there was a lot of leftover stuff and normally we would have taken it, but we weren't able Got to, away. I, yeah, like, we were going back to the house. There wouldn't be room. I mean, it was just this whole thing. Yeah, so I know it's 
like as much as I appreciate it, like I loved it and I ate as much as I fucking could. Um, but it was a lot. And but again, I liked it. It was something different. They did a lot of things different with it that made it tempting to me. Mm-hmm. Um it, but on on that flip, if you're gonna like like Jeff Jeff was mentioning about a menu that has like different things and different items that if it's all in some way appealing to you or tasty to you, or you think you might like it, I'm willing to give a place like multiple tries and mm-hmm. be like, Oh, okay. That was good. Or that was okay. Let me see if I like this other thing on the menu that I also kind of like, but didn't order it this time. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Although well, I did it, things like, like uh, when I was uh, still living in St. Paul, Minnesota, I mean, actually run through the entire menu of um and also their seasonal beverages mm-hmm. uh at caribou coffee because i'm mm-hmm. like one i was kind of new at the time to mm-hmm. coffee beverages mm-hmm. so like i have never had a macchiato and americano or anything like that so part of it was was to run through and just get get an idea of what do i like Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't know. Maybe I prefer Americanos over basic mochas, which still um, caramel mocha. <laughs> that's caramel mocha latte. That's 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 my standard beverage. <laughs> or caramel mocha uh, caribou cooler, mm-hmm. which is basically if you, if... your fra- frappuccino, and it's yeah. better than your frappuccino. Yeah. So yeah. Um... Brunch. <laughs> brunch, 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 brunch. So I think, like, uh, to you know, I think the gays, quote unquote, uh, just as a broad category, co-opted brunch um, as a way to communally come together. Mm-hmm. And I guess my feeling is now that uh, there's potential, depending on where you live, based on um, COVID vaccinations, mm-hmm. rates mm-hmm. of cases, uh, if your state government or local government um, has changed, like, you know, restrictions and those type of things. I think yeah. this is starting to come back into the yeah the fold, so to speak. Agreed. Um, and Does whether or not really you go big is... table so everybody's six feet apart. <laughs> and you can well, that brings up a good... I mean, but that's a really good point, though, Jeff. Like, everything has changed. Like... In our view of stuff, like looking back, I'm like, yeah, like like we used to do so many things that we just did not consider the potential of that. So absolutely, mm-hmm. like you could have like a small like that like that tongue in cheek article had a kind of a reference to like, you know, how a group of like three or five suddenly <laughs> turned into 10 or 15. And I was like, yeah, that kind of happens. Like, you know, it's kind of like phone tree, you know, and it's like, you know, people are texting each other, messaging and be like, hey, girl, we're going blah, 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 you know, and it kind of gloms on and gloms on. And sure, you might not be able to get a, a whole long table together. So you might be willing to split into pods and like, mm-hmm. you know, take this booth and this table or whatever. But like, you yeah. know, everybody's kind of gathering and socializing. But as Jeff just pointed out, like, if you're not part of the bubble, mm-hmm. like, I think that's why, you know, this this it hasn't been a thing in a year and it might be a little while before it kind of comes back into to style, but as we have seen, our community is not exactly the most uh intelligent at times. Um and I don't know how else to phrase it because they are like, yeah, yeah bitch, you know, and they're yeah, just I mean going and doing stuff. I I, I mean, if it hasn't already happened, like, I mean, actually, let, let's be honest, it's happening. Like, like mm-hmm. people are, are still are going out and congregating and whatever. Um, vaccinations, you know, be damned. Or are, are they've gotten it, but maybe they haven't waited the, rest, the requisite time before they, you know, are fully immune. Like, and also, if we're a disclaimer, for everyone that gets the, the vaccine, it is, it is not immunity. <laughs> like, <laughs> You can still get COVID. Like, it's just not as harmful. It's not going to, it's more than likely not going to put you in a hospital. Your like body that's, can, that's, can fight it a lot easier. You're, yeah. Yeah. This is not like the measles, mumps, you know, 
polio vaccines that you I got think it's when like you were a, little. A fourteen day yeah. uh, upkeep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna call it. And that's yeah. that's for the two shots. It's after the second shot, not after the first. Yeah, shot. yeah. Uh, so again, um, you know, people are going and doing things, and I'm seeing it, you know, on my Facebook and on my social medias, and I understand the desire to want to go out and do things. I appreciate and I understand it, and I respect it. As someone who is a social butterfly, like. I am you no. Know, I'm longing for the days when we can finally start gathering a little bit more, and you know, while I'm still doing things here and there, you know, masked and whatever. Uh, but I think, think, you know, think, <laughs> like just fucking think. Um, you know, be careful. Keep things small. You know, a bubble is great if you can make that bubble and maintain that bubble, because that really is helpful um, in keeping things from being problematic. Uh, but, you know, you know, I, 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 if what they've been saying is true, summer will be kind of like things can start happening a little bit, more. maybe more, closer to the fall, but definitely kind of like, you know, Hopefully by the end of the end of this year, mm -hmm. things will be able to happen a bit more often. Um, and there are things that are being planned and being done. So, you know, think carefully, be careful. Um, if you can get the vaccine, get the vaccine. You, I don't want to make it mandatory. And I agree that they don't want to make it mandatory either. And that's fair. Um, but, but it's free. Like, yeah, it is free. And, um, you know, it, it, it knocks it, it, depending on what you get, it can knock you out for a day or two, maybe a little longer, depending on how your body reacts to it. And then you're good for a while. And then if you get like a two dose when you have to do it again, but again, it's, it's, it's easy. It's a shot. Um, hopefully it'll help. And it'll help us get closer to moments where we can start gathering again. If you if you want yeah. gay brunch, <laughs> if you get a, a vaccine, if you won't show fruity tooty, fresh and snooty, like mimosa, grande latte, whatever's like, yeah, go yeah, take some time, get get vaccinated, whatever. Yeah. And then you can have gay brunch. You can gather. Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the end. Mm -hmm. Anyways, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Let us know about what you uh, usually expect or what your gay brunch is all about. Um, you can do that over on CubsOutLoud.com. Leave a comment on blog. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail. Sex or otherwise at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us with various social media outlets at Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also go join our Entourage chat where you can get links to when we go live at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning to do these shows by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can support us by getting a various accoutrements such as Soppy Bottom 23 shirt or a version 1 logo shirt that I'm wearing. Um, over at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. There's a whole bunch of other stuff too. You can subscribe to us, but come near Patreon at patreon.com slash comes out loud, or you can also just uh, send us some cash to see what we can do to improve this show by going to paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us through Google Play, uh, Amazon, uh -huh. Audible, um, and Spotify. And probably anywhere else you can get podcasts. Uh, you can find me anywhere in the uh, Internet as box set box puppy box cub box something or other wind gem w y n d g e m on Twitch. I haven't been streaming much uh, lately because I've been engrossed in Final Fantasy fourteen. So Final Fantasy, it's your Final Fantasy. Um, anyway, uh, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub seventy nine on most bear related sites or on Facebook, or find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. 
If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Garber73. It's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. And with that, uh, uh, I need to do this. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Bye.